Richard Tennant, it's a great pleasure to um, have this conversation with you here in Montrichet, lost in the uh, Swiss countryside. Some people argue that this is part of the Swiss metropolis, the centre of the Swiss metropolis. Um, in a few moments you will receive the Prix Européen de l'Essai, um, which is the European Prize for the Essay. This award is for uh, the essay, so the best essay. I wanted to know um, about the, the, your affinities uh, with this genre of writing, how you came to, to write essays uh, in the first place. I, I guess they started in, uh, in two ways. One was personal, because I was a friend of Roland Barthes, and the kind of writing he did was the kind of writing I wanted to do. And um, in his own work, he didn't begin as an essayist, you know. He, he wrote uh, mythology, and then he became a kind of very austere structuralist writer. And there was a point in his life when he decided, no, I want to write essays. So I had long talks with him about, about what that meant. And I think I came into it, this is all very personal, do you mind? No. I was a musician and I'd been a working musician since I was an adolescent. And when I started thinking uh, that I wouldn't do this music for a living, I nonetheless had the feeling that I should, I be, should be doing something that was expressive rather than demonstrative. Do you know what I mean? Yes. That something that, uh, just as you would listen to a piece of music, that you would read through a text and have the experience of reading through it. And that, of course, is an essay. That's what an essay is. It's not something that can be summarized or, you know, bullet points, things like that. It is an experience to read it. You want to have an engagement rather than a demonstration. What felt unnatural to me was this academic style in which uh, you, it's like a, a, a stick that you hit over the head of a reader and say, this is what I think. And uh, it's not a conversation with the reader. And if you can uh, write in a way which is very uh, stimulating and elusive to somebody else, you're stimulating yourself to think in ways. One of the mistakes that young academics make is to imagine that thinking is one thing and then the problem of expression is a kind of totally different thing. I know if I can't find the right, um, even the right sentence rhythm for something, I'm not thinking about it correctly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, because of my musical background, I, I'm always thinking in terms of sentence rhythms. And that helps me think about how to make something clearer, more evocative, how to move people and myself from one idea to another. Um, I spend a lot of time, just in the craft level, thinking about where paragraphs come because that's a way for me to think about when have we developed something so that it moves on to another, uh, to another stage. So, you know, for me, they're inseparable. Inseparable. And uh, the f students that I've had, I've mostly worked with them on how to write rather than what to think. Writing essays is, is a difficult thing for the, the, uh, the present generation of, of researchers because they, they are pushed to uh, line up uh, peer-reviewed uh, uh, articles in, in journals and to publish in, in large uh, uh, publishing companies. So they, they ca essays do not really count. And I, I w was wondering if uh, you had some thoughts about the fact that um, essays might be a waning genre in research and in, in the social sciences. It's, maybe it's a, it's a genre that is bound to disappear. I think academics are going to be less and less part of the intellectual, um, uh, part of the discussion of mm -hmm. intellectual mm -hmm. life. That, uh, that independent writers, uh, 
uh, people who are not writing for narrow little publications will fill a void rather than the void will expand. Huh. The, my colleague was going to speak to us tonight as an architect, but he is um, he's involved in every public discussion about what cities should be like. You know, but he doesn't he doesn't have a PhD huh. in huh. anything. Huh. Huh. So I think what's going to happen is we have a shift in culture where the university becomes more apart and that other people will fill its place. And I think that's a good idea. You know? If you look in the time of the great essayists, like uh, in the middle of the 19th century, uh, John Stuart Mill, um, Herzen, these are not people who are college, uh, university professors. They have a different life. Darwin never taught. Hmm. The greatest essayist on science of the 19th century. He never had an academic post. So maybe we'll return to that. And that's sad for universities, but I think good for intellectual life.